That was a disappointing intro, JJ. You need to rig it next time to be a belch or something of that nature. Sunshine here with Mod and Grand Grant. We have day, this is day three, day four. I'm losing track. Day three, actually. I believe. Day three. Okay, day eight of Captain's Draft 3.0, presented by PIA, Private Internet Access. Today we have two best of threes. Should be interesting because one of the teams, Mama's Boys, in fact, was the underdog. They came from the qualifiers. They beat Virtus Pro 2 0. Yeah. And it was pretty damn convincing. And they played with a bunch of ringers. I don't even know how many at this point. Sexy Bambo was randomly back, which was originally on their roster when they started. Then he got... I don't think he got kicked. He got... He left, apparently, he left on the court. Board, yeah. Yeah. So, but it's going to be them versus Empire. Yeah, and Empire lost to EG, I think, in the upper bracket. I think it was 2-1. to one. Uh, the, seri or the game that EG lost was on Lux, which is not surprising. So a lot of these games have coming out of the coin toss, but both of these teams play on the European server, the Luxembourg server, so it should be fine. Uh, Mama's Boys didn't just beat them. They, like, destroyed Virtus Pro. It was actually, like, pretty crazy when you think about it. Like, Virtus Pro is, like, an insanely good team. And how did, like, Mama's Boys, with, like, three stand-ins, absolutely just obliterate them? I don't know. That was actually a nuts game. It was a nuts series. The first game they, they picked Ursa, it was really damn good. I thought it was really strong stuff for Mama's Boys, so... I want to see if they can beat Empire. If they can beat Empire, like, what the hell's happening? Like, the world's gone crazy, if that's the case. Yeah, maybe uh, Mama's Boy just figured out the, uh, the Russian Dota scene, and they're just going to trample all over them now. Well, I think the biggest surprise, not only Virtus Pro being obviously a better team in general, or at least that's what the consensus would be, but FNG is their captain. He's considered probably a top five captain in the world. This is captain's draft. This is where they shine. They failed. They weren't in the qualifiers. They were just directly invited. They played, what, three matches in the group stage, and then yeah. they lost the first match in playoffs. Yep. I don't know, man. That's, that's got to be the biggest upset in, I'm trying to think of the last two seasons, which I can't remember anything. I'm just going to say it's the biggest upset we've had. It so probably far. is. I think, uh, I mean, you, you mentioned MPG being a great drafter, but I feel like his drafts both games weren't necessarily that great. I think we were talking about this yesterday. They couldn't deal with the Ursa at all. They had, like, no disables whatsoever to stop the Ursa from just running over them completely. And then the second game, they went for an all-out push strat. And then all-out push strat actually failed because um, there were just some really good plays from, I think, Black on the Legion doing overwhelming odds. It's just a really good team fight, I feel like, for both teams. But, I mean, just the all-in push strat was a little too much, I think. And it did not work, so... Yeah, maybe it was just uh, the honeymoon phase, coming back, Bambo back. He's like, hey, I'm going to go for greener pastures. He came back instead, back to his team that qualified for the event. And now he's looking good, trying to impress him again. All right, let's get some important information out there, guys. How's it going, Mott? I'm okay. doing okay. Well, uh, that's a lie. I'm not doing okay. <laughs> uh, What's wrong, friend? I have, I have a sinus infection. I have a fever. That's all I want to say about it. Are I'm, you contagious? That's all anybody I wants mean, to know. I mean, probably. If I sneeze on you, you're going to like die. So just be aware of that. Mm, that does not sound good. No, it doesn't. Grant, how about yourself? Doing great, dude. Just got some good sleep. I'm looking good. Whatever. So we Took all went to the movies yesterday. We went and saw Deadpool. <laughs> We're not going to give out any information about the no spoilers or anything like that. Batman dies. Yeah, we, <laughs> we took two separate cars, and I gave the wrong address to everybody since nobody lives in Arizona. And we all ended up at different uh, theaters. So we watched it separately. Which, if you really think about it, isn't really that big of a deal because, <laughs> like, when you think about going to a movie with somebody, you don't really talk during the movie. What difference does it really make, right, guys? But that was, yeah, they they drove forty minutes to the theater. I drove fifteen. It was a dream. Yeah, but they got here earlier. Well, because your, your movie time was later. Well, they, no, our movie time was the know. same time, but we showed up and Grant went in and he said it was packed because. When we called originally, Zayari or whoever was it, Slack, Slack's, Slack's like called 12%. the theater and like, yeah, twelve percent full. I'm like, that does not sound like this theater at all. The entire car ride there, that we were just been. ripping on you, like, all right, so we drove forty minutes to get Thai Can food last him? night. Now we're driving okay. forty minutes to go to the movie theater and back. And we <laughs> couldn't figure out why we were driving so far to see this damn movie, and then it all made sense. When was it worth it, Zayari? The, for the theater or the food? The, food? What do you mean? What food? Are Thai you food. About, oh, you're talking about Thai food. We were just making theater. fun of you for driving so far every time we want to go do something. Well. Okay, the theater, that's my fault. The, the Thai food was worth it, I think. I so. agree with that. But I don't know. The, the movie was quite good. Mott, sorry you couldn't join us, that's friend. That's okay. I, uh, you I could have been in the 15-minute theater one. Uh, I'm, well, I could have been. I was, uh, I was getting some well-needed sleep. I was like dying in the so, bathroom. <laughs> I wish we could get that on mic. You hear a very violent cough and then like something <laughs> breaking. So 
<laughs> Slacks is doing fine, guys. Don't worry. And now it sounds like he's jerking off. I don't know what's going on over there. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> everyone needs to do it. There's a house of guys. It's Valentine's Day. Why not? Oh, yeah. The only person you love is yourself, then go for it. That's true. That's true. And actually, there were some great jokes in Deadpool. If you guys haven't seen Deadpool yet, if it's not out where you were, it should be out worldwide. I guess sometimes yeah, they, they, they only, stagger the dates. I don't think it's out worldwide. I think it's out in America. Just America? Well, that's how a lot of it works. But, like, they, the, release, they release movies like every... like couple weeks or so in different countries. It's not for every movie, though. I like, this one was specifically made for, like, Valentine's, right? That's their whole marketing scheme. So the question really? is, well, does, everybody, does everybody celebrate Valentine's Day? Is this an American-only I, I thing? I think everybody celebrates Valentine's Day. I'd be very surprised if... I think a lot of people celebrate Valentine's Day. Um, I mean, none of us are, apparently. So. JJ, do the Germans celebrate Valentine's Day? What? Do the Germans celebrate Valentine's Day? Eh. Eh? What do you mean, eh? It's the yes or no question. All right, okay. that's a yes, confirmed. All right, best Valentine's Day, guys. Mine is getting dumped on Valentine's Day. How about you? And by dumped, it was just my second date, so it doesn't really count. Well, mine's having a date for Valentine's Day, so I still, yeah, haven't, I mean, I still <laughs> haven't had it yet. So one day, you know. Mine is going I'm to similar. Deadpool. How about that? Ooh. Sorry, Mont. You were at the house. <laughs> I was sleeping. You were with... Uh, but it wasn't Valentine's Day, so it was okay. Uh, it's, it's, it's Valentine's, Valentine's Day day. Valentine's Day today. It was the eve of Valentine's Day. My, val my best Valentine's Day is spending it here with you guys. All right. I wish we had a good segue, <laughs> but that is unfortunately going to have to cut it. So, <laughs> But the series after this is going to be Alliance versus, who is it? Uh, uh, the upper liquid, bracket, yeah, Liquid. That's, that's right. Lower bracket. Oh, yeah, Alliance yeah, lost. Oh, that's they right. lost Vega. That's actually, wow, that, was, that was even a, okay, that's the second biggest upset probably. Of this tournament, but Alliance versus uh, Liquid. What do you guys think of that match? Alliance, of course, coming with a huge win streak. They won every single game in the group stage, and then just lost. Went they, straight to the lower bracket. Yeah, they might be kind of demoralized. And Liquid, I mean, they looked pretty good in like their first game yesterday, and then they got thrashed by DC in the second game. They came back and won pretty convincingly in the third. I think you just use a little bit, and they can start steamrolling. If they take Alliance out here, I think everyone's considering Alliance a top three team again, but. After how bad they looked versus Vega, it's possible. Yeah, that was that was a rough series for them. I was very surprised to see them get two owed. I mean, it really comes down to how they're going to play. How they, are they going to play like they played yesterday? Or are they going to play like they played the rest of the entire tournament? Mm. I mean, I feel like they're going to win regardless. But I don't know. We'll see. It's probably going to be two one. I imagine uh, in either favor, but I'm going to go with Alliance probably. All right. Well, Alliance has been quite dominant and. In Captain's Draft, as well as Captain's Mode, probably more so in Captain's Mode. I mean, I don't know. Captain's Draft, they do go undefeated, so I don't know. But Alliance is a team to be reckoned with for sure. I was actually questioning whether they were after WCA. Like, there was this whole argument whether they should have been invited to the Major directly. Yeah. And you can still make the case. Okay, this was my point, okay, because some people took offense. You can still make the point that they shouldn't have been invited directly because at the time... All they did was win WCA, and that was kind of a garbage-ass tournament. No right? one took that seriously except the Lions fans. Right. Like, so the question is like, whether you look at the results themselves or how good the team you think is going to be or how good the team is, right? Yeah. So it's kind of the same argument with Rave and uh, was it Fnatic? Or what was it? Team Malaysia, right? Mm -hmm. For last TI. Yeah. Rave deserved it based on results in the past, but Malaysia was going to probably be a better team and Rave was just going to fail. So which one, do you, like from that concept alone... You guys have like a strong feeling one way or another. I think it's I think it's more different because I feel like Rave is like nobody expected any like Rave to you know win TI or win you know a major or anything like that. But for Fnatic or Team Malaysia, I don't think and not to say that anyone expected them to win, but they expected them to get a lot further. Both Liquid and Alliance definitely can win whatever tournament they go to because they have that ability. Because you saw Star Ladder Alliance won that after getting oh, no, no. this was before all of this, right? So, but remember. I think. The, as far as the invites are concerned, I think the invites were fine. Um, I was surprised it wasn't both of them, but then again, you'd have to like. It would have I, been knocked out. I then. know, right? That, that's the tough thing. So, honestly, it's it's really hard to say. I'm, I think I think the, the invites were fine. I mean, because Liquid was going to get there regardless. If they couldn't get there through the bracket, through the qualifiers, then that would have been rough. But and then they obviously wouldn't have deserved it. So, Grant, what are your thoughts on that? The whole. Um, you deserve it based on results or potential to do well. In the I think it has to be on results. Like potential, everyone has potential. You could just completely kill EG or Secret, make a team of five, and I mean, obviously they have potential. But would you invite them? 
for that? If you win like one best of three, yeah. it's a top two team, right? Yeah, if it's a, it's a bunch of TI winners, then I think they would invite them, actually. I think it's a mixture. I, I tend to agree more with Grant as far as like going based on results alone, but I don't think that's how it is. That's, that's not. I, I mean, everyone has their favorites. If you see like a team with Kuroki and Puppy on in three randoms, you'd be like, well, there's Kuroki and Puppy. Like, yeah, we should invite them. All right, so with Captain's Draft as a mode, since you guys hadn't cast it before this season, what are your thoughts? I've loved the draft so much. <laughs> so much. It's, it's, it's got great heroes. It's so fast. <laughs> it's just the best thing ever. You, it's so much different than Captain's <laughs> Mode. God. And I love it so much. I, I kind of wish the pool was smaller. Again, smaller I remember last again. CD it was like way smaller. No. They seem to add, you don't. Oh, you mean the like the the the, the heroes that oh, no, the, like that you can draft from. No, no it that's seems the like, same. It's the same oh, as last. But the difference mm -hmm. is that every hero is viable now, and last that's season true, it yeah. wasn't. Well, every hero, yeah. So that that was kind of one of the the gripes, I guess, from some people on the, some forums, we'll call them, where they would say that this season's captain's draft isn't as good as last season because more heroes are viable. So it kind of looks like some of the heroes are being played over and over. But the difference is, you don't see these combination of heroes. That's the thing, Yeah. right? Like, sure, sure you have the odd Ricky, the odd Arc Warden, and crazy-ass picks like that. Omni Knight is pretty common. But I mean, overall, just the five-man lineups are pretty crazy. It looks like we're going to be in the draft here. So let's We've seen a bunch of Warlocks. I think that's one of the biggest things. All right, what do we got here? Not this time, though. What do we got? We got a lot of supports. OD at the bottom, like always. Carries are looking okay. I haven't Ish. seen Meepo yet. And it is going to be the same lineup for Mama's Boy as yesterday, so. All right. Black is Black owned last series. Give him Luigi again because he owned with that hero. That was great. If only they had known that Meepo would be available, they would have gotten Weeha. Oh, this. yeah. Maybe Black can play Meepo. Ah, just kidding. That's not going to happen. Um, so what do we got here? So All right, forget about what's viable, guys. Cause, what's know, crazy? What, what do you want to see? Spirit Breaker. Yeah. What? Uh, Why? You're, Grant's a huge Spirit Breaker fan. Grant's I helped him. I invented that banned. hero in the NEL, dude. I brought, I brought that into him. Yeah, but he got, he got old fast, though. He got picked like every single it, game. It's true. And he got, I mean, anytime a hero has a global presence, it, they're just going to be considered strong no matter what it is. Like yeah. Furion now. Yeah. First pick every game almost. Yeah, that's true. I There's yeah. an Ursa. If it doesn't get banned, it'll get picked up. That's one of those I wanna, heroes. I want to see Phoenix, potentially. I'm, I, I don't think these heroes are going to get picked. They have a chance to be Phoenix and Nyx Assassin. I feel like I, I like all, both of those heroes. There's a couple good heroes against Phoenix, like, uh, to take out the egg. There's That's true. the Ursa and Legion Commander right now. And Meepo. Yeah. And Meepo, yeah. I don't think Phoenix will get picked. It, there's, like, very few instances where, it, unless you're picking it last, it's just not going to get picked, I feel like, in a lot of a lot of the time. There's an Ab, but, um, a bad in the no, pool. I, I us, agree with know. Purge that you should just go with what sounds better. Abaddon sounds Abaddon, way better. Okay, well, good. I don't care if it's wrong. Windrunner is still a thing for me, by the way. It's That's how I see guys. It's, it's spelled a bad Don. Okay, I'm but he's not even bad. He's a good one. <laughs> <laughs> That's just, right. I'm, uh, I'm, I'll see you guys later. I'm we got some good jokes on the couch, everybody. Woo! You know what I'd like to see, and it's gonna sound weird saying it because you just haven't seen it in a while. Shadow Fiend. He Which is, is not a thing. He's not. It seems like him, him and TA have been in a lot of these pools, and they're usually top tier picks. But yeah. in CD, it seems they're just Team not really valued at all. Yeah, and now they pick up Quap over those like those heroes, I which think, is interesting. I think Quap's good because there's not that much lockdown, unless you're going to commit to like a Sand King or an Axe, like no disruptor or anything like that, which would be huge against him. Yeah, against I think her. we're going to see a Rost. I have a feeling that's one of the better supports in here. Someone's I think need Abaddon it. has to be picked this game. Like, he's too good, right? right. If, like, he's good enough in CM, yeah. but in CD, he's just... Oh, yeah. If it was a ridiculous. North American game, he would have been first picked. Oh, that's that true. hero is so valued. I, and, I mean, it's a good hero tough. It's strange that some heroes are just completely ignored in other regions. Yeah, like, yeah. Abaddon, I don't understand why he's not more picked in other regions. Yeah, like, Legion Commander in Europe, he, even in CM, he's been getting, like, second, third picked. In North America and China, they don't even yeah. consider I mean, it a every, hero. Okay, every season of Captain Draft has a hero that comes onto just, the scene, right? Yeah. There was Witch Doctor and Centaur in Yo. past season... I think Legion Commander is this season. Then that, Warlock. Yeah. There's been a lot of Warlocks. But not yeah, in CM yet. I've really not loved the CM, Warlock yeah. picks, honestly. That's true, yeah. But it's also always mostly been core. And people are like, well, what about support Warlock? What do you think no, about God, that? No, God, no. Well, okay, you can get away with four if you get a Midas, right? Yeah, as I long as you get a Midas, fair. it doesn't matter. It's, just, it's so hard because he's so good at farming. He's so good at trading and sustaining, I think. Yeah, I think Midas Iron Talon on any four support. There you go. I swear just went. made that. Speaking of that, there's tree, tree guys. Tree protector. Yeah. Let's go. Come on. Or we can do the life stealer cheese strat. Okay, looking at the lineups, do you have any good ancient killing heroes? Because life stealer is always good 
against teams with none of that. Uh, Gyro's so okay late pick, game, but like game. he has to get da like he doesn't get that much damage right Team until like like forty minutes. There's not really no. There's not really good any like any good Ursa's killers. Good, though, and so. yeah, I mean besides, so if anybody's gonna get it, it would be it would be Empire. Or not Empire, this, sorry, Mama's Boys. This is interesting. I like the draft from both sides. I was going to say something. I, I just want to see, uh, I want to have the camera, if they pick Tree and Protector, I want to have the camera on Tree and Jungle the entire time just to see how his jungle goes, honestly. That's like the most important thing for me. Yeah, can we get like hype yeah. casting of the jungle? That's what, <laughs> that's what uh, we're going to be expecting now. Yeah. And see the silencer Empire. for Empire as they have 50 seconds for their final pick. This is not surprising, I feel like, because there's just, there's not that many supports in here, and I feel like silencer is... I don't know if he's even that good, though. I guess he's good against Dazzle here to stop Shadow Wave and, and against the Shadow Grave as well. And, like, Ursa's just going to jump on him and kill him, right? Like, Silence is just going to die. Like, he, it's like the Warlock yesterday. He has no way to get away from the Ursa, and, like, unless he gets four staff, which he pretty much has to this game, I think. I don't know. I, 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 I think the Ursa pick again. It, and this is the team that, that destroyed Virtus Pro with Ursa. Like, Pycat owned with that hero, so I don't know. I think it's a really good pick this game. Maybe that's setting themselves up for something else. Or they just want to silence her core. Because silencer support doesn't make that much Five sense right now. Remaining. But we'll see. Gonna be a Sand King. Probably I guess that I might be an off lane, Havos Sand King. Yeah, it's gonna be off lane Sand King, Tusk, Silencer Support, Duo Quap, Mid, Gyrocop the safe lane. Probably. I'd be surprised if they were landed any other way, but all right, Mama's Boys. I'm assuming PyCats can play the Ursa. That's what he's done in the past, yeah, I, I believe. Yeah, I think so. LC it's be by Black, Black yeah, exactly. buying those drums, his favorite build. I don't know. That was pretty honest yesterday. Was I'm not saying it's bad. It's just he always buys drums I know every he hero. Does. <laughs> he does. Every hero. Slark. <laughs> just like throw out any hero that he plays. He, he'll buy a drum on it. All right, I, so you need like an off lane here then, right? Yeah. Um, Darkseer was banned out, which I thought was really good. You can go for a Baden. Phoenix is still available. You can pick Phoenix last pick. Although Gyrocopter and Crop are pretty good against Phoenix this game. I was going to say Pugna for Sand King, but then I remember that that thing's bugged where it doesn't cancel the. His Nether, bla or Nether, Nether Ward doesn't Warden. cancel the ult. Or oh. the blink, I should say. That's interesting. If that's still a bug, maybe they fix it. Who knows? There's, there's a I mean, couple Axe is available for the off lane. Yeah, you I, can do any dueling. I mean, Abaddon is still there. Yeah, I think, it will, I think it will be maybe in the bad and just. I don't know, it's tough. No, it's the Nyx Assassin. All right, okay. cool. There's just, there was a lot of good offlaners there, I think, and Nyx is really good. Um, he, again, this is another hero that's just going to own Silencer or like one of these squishier heroes. If they get caught out by it, he's just going to wrap around behind him and all of a sudden, boom, you're dead or something like that. All right, so with this draft, we will send it over to the caster, Zyori, and Purge. Thank you very much, Suns fan. Mama's boys versus Empire, ready to get underway here. This is elimination, though, Purge. Loser of the two series today, actually, going home. This is the, the sad part of the tournament where people have to start getting knocked out. That's exciting, though. It's, oh, uh, sure. I mean, it's already been a good run for Mama's boys. They already got an upset what, yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, they could do it here as well. Um, I think that they, this is going to be a pretty even game, definitely. I think so, too. Yeah, especially with this lineup of Mama Boys, Black, uh, as well as Sexy Bambo. I talked about it on the panel a little bit. Same roster they had yesterday, and they mm -hmm. really look to be in good form. It's kind of an interesting draft for them, too, because they're going to have to be putting an Ursa in the mid lane, which is, you know, at first I was like, maybe they're going to do safe lane Legion Commander like they did yesterday, and they ended up with that. Um, and they also went for a Nyx Assassin on Bambo, and he plays a really good Nyx Assassin. It's good against a lot of Empire's heroes. Very good against Silencer, very good against Quap. Um, pretty good against Sand King and Tusk as well, just because uh, if you can initiate on them first, mm -hmm. then they can't get those defensive measures off. So Yeah, we talked about Nyx Assassin a little bit on the, the couch yesterday, and this is one of those heroes that can be really deadly in Captain's Draft when there are limited ways to deal with them, and just mm -hmm. a hero that I, I feel like is often underlooked and can be really powerful if he has a good laning stage. If he gets level 6 in a pretty timely manner, mm -hmm. he can really start to take over the game, and I, I have faith in the Bambo Nyx Assassin. And a lot of it does depend on how the enemy team reacts to it. If he's doing a good job, at um, creating space, looking for kills. If the sentries are in position, then it completely changes things if you can get those kills off. So uh, they're going to move into the enemy jungle to start things off. Yep. And uh, probably going to be blocking camps. They do have some sentries here on the uh, Shadow Shaman. So double sentry. I, I mean, they kind of need in lane as well to deal with Sand King, I guess. Yeah. But their tri lane is quite strong against Sand King. Oh, they're going to smoke. Five hero smoke here from Mama's Boys. I, I kind of like this because I think Empire's draft is going to be better in the late game. So I, I think a little bit of early laning advantage would be huge for them. Yeah. 
This isn't the best level one lineup for Empire. Queen of Pain, clock. Silencer, definitely not uh, the dream. Okay. They're going to bump into FN here. The smoke gets broken. Shackles come out from Zap Yabzor. They've got plenty of damage. That's an easy first blood. And it will be the Shadow Shaman that gets that bit of bonus gold. I, I really thought they were going to maybe weave around the trees a little bit to approach that. Maybe something like this. But they just went straight at him and the Quap was not watching. And that's, that's a good kill. Yeah, really nice. Sexy Bambo with an Iron Talent first item with a set of Tangos. We might actually see some more action. Bambo walks up to the high ground. He does have a stun, but he gets blocked out by the Ice Shard. Stun on all three. Monk yes, Darmanus <laughs> boys trying to get in to help him out, but Rocket Barrage will be there, and it's a dead Nyx Assassin. Yeah, that was kind of a really big mistake here, because that actually means that the rating team gets bottom bounty rune now, and before they maybe weren't going to do that. It I was mean, kind of an awkward play. He didn't have vision, obviously, as he poked to the high ground, yeah. and he wanted to scout it out, but... You know the enemies are nearby. I mean, you just saw Maybe. them behind the quad. I, I mean, I think that's why he ran high ground. He wanted to say, are they here? Are they not here? Because if they're not, then he can... They can guarantee they get both bounty runes. You know, they could leave one person there, mm -hmm. grab that bounty rune, and send four top. So yeah. I think it was a, a goal to get both bounties. I don't think it's worth dying for it, but... Either way, they got the first blood. That's going to keep things about equal. They also get a smoke used at the start of the game, so they have slight mid-game disadvantage there. Yeah. It will be a mid lane Legion oh, commander, okay. though. Something we don't see too yeah. often, though. Up top already, Soxka wrapping around to put some pressure onto Havost. There are no sentry wards up here quite yet. Havost has one ready to rock and roll. Yep, uh, does. Put one down. Yep, sir's on the way. He's got sentries. Okay. So I kind of thought that they would put Legion yeah, commander is. mid against Quap because of the fact that she basically just can't use her dagger. If she throws it on Legion commander, he just uses press the attack, and then it goes away. Yep. So he's just trading mana at that point, and once he gets a bottle, it's going to be absolutely fine. He can keep that up. So. Mm -hmm. It'll just kind of become a trade you more, but with the stout shield, Legion Commander is not going to have to worry too much. And once he gets um, overwhelming odds, he can nuke Quap with it and then run after her and chase her and trade hits. You might see a kill here. Up top, Havos is going to be in a lot of trouble. Yapsor comes in with the stretch arm strong shackles once more, and this time Havos will fall. Pycat getting credit for that one. Look, that rotation, he also blocked this camp down here with that uh, sentry ward. So. I, there's there's no way that stretch arm strong was the appropriate reference. <laughs> I barely understand that man, and I'm, I'm like 28 years old, so... <laughs> That's true. Stretch was a good, Armstrong was, was before our, our far. I was like in grade school then. That was like actually 20, 20 years ago. So oh, man. that's actually really disgusting to say, but that's a fact. <laughs> <laughs> 20 years. <laughs> so Bambo is going to move into the uh, his camp here. He Iron Talon first, Nyx Assassin. Yeah. Interesting. Well, the hero is not very good at jungling mm -hmm. um, in most cases, but if you give him a coin blade, then he can actually do this jungling here. And he's got a ton of base regen on the hero. His armor's a little low, but it's okay. So with the Tango, he's healing for 10 HP per second. And he doesn't get that much out of this. He will almost get a level 2. He's going to go back to lane, uh, maybe try to mess things up a bit. But every bit helps, basically. Yeah. And not to mention, just it's nice to have Iron Talon in the late game sometimes, just against if, if there's a tree in your way, or if a Bambo loves Quelling Blades, he used to buy them on things on people like Bane, just to go hide in trees in weird places, oh. because then your, your, your opponents don't know where you are. Uh -oh. So I guarantee he's going to use this all game. This Iron Talon is not only going to increase his farm rate, but he's going to use this in smart ways that'll give him tactical advantage yeah. later on. We see Bambo taking a lot of pressure down bottom. He does find level 2, so probably get a point in Spike Carapace makes his life a little easier, but the Tusk has been very active. funnick has been moving around, checking this camp constantly to see if he can find the Nyx Assassin yeah. at low HP. And the important thing that Bambo did here is rather than just AFK jungle on this, this medium camp or the large camp, what he did was he farmed it, it respawned, but he moved back to lane. And by doing that, it forced the supports to rotate over and spend some time zoning. If, if the supports spend at least a little time zoning, that means they're less likely to gank mid. Mm -hmm. So it may seem like what he did was a little inefficient, and it was kind of. But he also did limit the farm and pressure that his enemy supports could do. Yeah, Black almost found a solo kill on FN in Ooh. the mid lane. Abos did rotate in and kind of pushed him back. Sa Soxka is nearby. There's a courier with an empty oh, bottle on it, slow. but they'll put it through the trees. Yeah. And it looks like the courier will be just fine, even though it's on the ground still. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really hard to snipe couriers to mid. A lot of teams are watching their map in that area a lot more often. So, yeah. uh, Black in the meantime has got 13 CS versus Quap 16, so he's doing just fine considering he's a melee hero. And Legion Commander's base damage is really high, so she absolutely can do this matchup. Yeah, and you're absolutely right about Quap not grabbing the Shadow Strike. You almost always see her get that against melee heroes, but makes perfect sense here. It's yeah. just wasted mana, really. <laughs> I, I just love seeing different matchups like that in Captain's Draft. It's yeah. so nice. Like, you get to see... Quap versus Legion. It's something that you can do, but if this is... Oh, wow, he almost got a kill there. Quap went down to 36 HP with the overwhelming odds. That was incredible. Yeah. FN's still farming pretty well, but this pressure is just unreal. There's both supports now just kind of wandering over to try to keep him safe. The offlane's been completely sacrificed for Empire, which means this Ursa is just in free farm heaven. I think Pycat's pretty happy with the way this has been set up. Well, we'll see if they go for a kill mid. Uh, Shadow Shaman does have Shackles as level 3. 
Um, he is going to go for the wraparound, though. They'll push the wave here. Piacat's got phase boots, so diving is definitely a possibility. In the meantime, Sand King's nowhere to be found. He's in the enemy, or he's in his jungle. He hit level 3 in the lane, and now he's going to be doing some jungle camps. So, Yep, I think this is definitely the way to do the Sand King. We saw the offlane Sand King yesterday a little bit underwhelming. And I think you need to take some personal time in the jungle to get that blink dagger. A Sand King without any farm is, is just not fun. You know, one thing that I like seeing about a lot of these weird heroes that we don't see very often is that skill builds are starting to become a lot more standardized. And down bottom, we're going to see a dive on the Nyx Assassin. Bambo should be able to make it out after a nice stun. TP rotation from Soxka. Ice Shards almost get him. There's the heal. There's a Shallow Grave available as well. And Bambo will be okay. No counter kill. Oh, he did TP to the lane. Duh. Is there a sentry in the app There is. They could kill Sand King. They've got he a doesn't, lane ward down as well. He doesn't have mana for Burrow actually right now. I think they're going to see him coming over, and that's why Yapsor is hiding. He doesn't want to get spotted yet until they can oh, guarantee mid. the kill. Black in some trouble. Snowball cross from Funnet. Goriath's on the other side, but Dazzle's already rotated over. Heal and Shallow Grave at the ready. Black is level 6. Oh, that nuke was good. Huge damage. damage. Now back up top. Avos gets dove under the tower. Pycat with a lot of right clicks. Huge damage. It's Yapzor. Gives him the other shock to secure the kill. That was a pretty solid kill there. It, it's so hard to kill a Legion Commander on the mid lane. He's got 900 HP and a Stout Shield. And if he's getting slowed in any way or silenced, he just removes... Well, not silenced, of course, but he removed almost all those nukes and disables. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of movement speed with the overwhelming odds, the regen from the press of the attack. Really hard hero to kill with what Empire have available in this game. Ooh, one Observer Ward badly placed here. It's right under a sentry. Not badly placed, obviously, but the fact that there's already a sentry there is a bad spot. Yeah. And kind of cool to see what happened there. This is a little bit of metagame advancement with that sentry ward. A lot of times that sentry is placed here, in which case, it doesn't catch where that Observer Ward is placed. So now pe players are starting to shift the Observers over so that they don't get dewarded. Mm -hmm. But the sentries are also moving over. So pretty soon here, you're going to see people probably start warding right on the high ground here because people are shifting their sentries over. It's really fun to watch those little, yeah. those little warding metagames adjust. Yeah, absolutely. Down bottom, Bambo going to be in a lot of trouble again. Aloha Dance picks up an easy solo kill, just chases him down with Rocket Barrage. And that's it. Aloha Dance will secure level 7 and a little bit of extra gold going his way. Yeah, he'll, he'll be really happy with that one. But Bambo's getting okay levels. He's four. Uh, he's got 500 gold in the bank. He's died twice, but one of those was at the start of the game. So mm -hmm. I, I'm not too worried about him though, thus far. Two deaths on Bambo, completely normal. But you'll see him do good things later, despite being yeah. slightly shut out. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I was mentioning the Ursa kind of in free farm heaven, but uh, Aloha Dance is in a similar state. They're within one or two CS of each other. And even though Bambo has been getting some experience, there's not really much he can do to stop Aloha Dance from finding those last hits. He'll get his phase boots up, Ring of Aquila and already has that belt of uh, giant strength. So could be just going for that Sanj first item to get some extra HP. We've been seeing that a Ooh. little more commonly. This mid gank was so sloppy here. Like, Avos was trying to move in and go for the burrow strike, but he just kept getting blocked by the Queen of Pain. <laughs> it actually was not terrible that he did this, though, because even if he doesn't get a kill out of it, it's going to put Black a little bit on edge, and he's not going to feel as comfortable going for a kill. Yeah. So just by showing himself occasionally and then going back to farm, he loses maybe 15 seconds, but he also means... Makes a Legion Commander a little bit more scar scared about getting last hits. I yeah. like little movements like that. It's good. Yeah, I like how uh, Empire are shuffling their lanes here. Havos now getting some jungle priority. He is level 5, but still pretty far off that Blink Dagger. Only about 750 gold in the bank. And that makes some space for Funnick to go up into the off lane and try and leech some XP. He's still trying to get level 6 for that Walrus Punch. He'll TP mid now. And it looks like we'll see a rotation onto Black. Four heroes from Empire grouped up here about the mid. FN reasonably low on HP, but does have a Sonic Wave. Maybe they can just blow him up if they drop the ultimates. Here we go. Snowball in. TP already on the way. Can they kill him fast enough? Ice Shards block him out, but Soxka's there. He's got a Shallow Grave ready. There's a Silence. Sonic Wave will finish off Black. Maybe they can get two here. Soxka on the run. Gordietz with big damage, but Shallow Grave's there. He's going to die. Soxka will stay alive. No! He yeah. goes down to the... Oh, that was a little bit yeah. of DOT left. Okay. He bad. got Arcane Curse, so that meant that... Yeah. After if he casts if he has to cast Grave to live, that means he's gonna take more arc arcane curse damage, so yeah, an extra right. four. So it's like fifty damage before a reduction. Alright. Pretty good gank. Um another weird thing was that Black actually used his press the attack on himself while he was using his regen rune. Mm. So he kinda wasted his ability to heal himself, which was actually a pretty big loss because that point. was right after the fight. And they, I'm sure they saw him do it because they had the observer ward. Yeah. So if he would have had press the attack there, I don't know if he hit eight as he died, but assuming he did that would have been a total of 200 HP extra there. And he had a 10 charge stick that he was, looks like he was saving for the grave, but the grave never came. So I think if he didn't mess that up, he could have lived there. Yeah. 
Well, that big rotation from Empire nets two kills, but it did leave some space for Bambo to hit level six. He's going to go back to the well now and regen up. He's got Arcane Boots, but this is when Nyx Assassin starts being a real threat. Even if he's not actively ganking, if he's off the map just moving around the jungle, the threat of the Vendetta coming will force Empire to be a little more cautious about their movements. He's actually farmed very well. He's got 21 CS, Arcane Boots, level six. He's got everything he needs for the early game, and now Bambo's going to do things where he just stays off the map. Actually, he might even just get the Silencer kill for free. Yeah. If Silencer stays by this creep wave, he just dies 100%. If he doesn't sense this now, or put a sentry ward down, he's dead. Yep, that's a dire sentry ward there that he just walked by, so he knows he was clear coming in. Uh, Silencer, dies. oh man, that's an easy kill. Vendetta right into mana burn. There you go. You, you gotta be looking at hero levels if you're against the next assassin. You're playing a hero like Silencer. That kill just oh. shouldn't happen. Roche pit. Pycat goes in, but there's a smoke from Empire. They pick up the bounty. They know what's going on. Pycat gets bashed right as they come in as well. No way he'll be able to survive that one. And Sand King will grab himself the kill there, and that, uh, well, he went for Arcane Boots first, so but some progress towards the Blink Dagger. Nice gank from Empire, and heads up rotation to catch the Ursa. It's just so dangerous to do that. Like, I mean, I know they just killed Silencer, but people are going to check Roche very, very often, and I don't like the fact that he did that without his team grouping to push, like, mid lane or something. I think that's the only way that that becomes okay to try to go for those early Roches. Yeah. They didn't even have a ward outside, so you couldn't even see if they were coming. That's just way too greedy from PyCat. Yep. And I'm looking for Radiant Wards here in that area, and I don't think they had vision of him walking in the pit. I think they were just kind of wary of the timing, smoked up, checked the pit. If not, they would have rotated bottom. So yeah. just smart timing from Empire. It's, it's not easy to steal Roches like that with a hero like um, Ursa or... Lycan. Yeah, or Lycan, yeah. They just take them so fast. But those heroes are also very vulnerable. If it's a hero like TA or Juggernaut or something, those heroes are a lot more survival if they do get caught, so. In the jungle, Gordiets initiated on by Sexy Bambo. A lot of damage comes his way, but can't quite find the kill yet. Dazzle's rotating down, won't get there in time. Stick charges keep the Silencer alive. Still, Bambo applying a lot of pressure here, and, and it takes the Silencer out of the fight. The rest of Mama's boys on their way over. Could be a buddy engagement as they try to keep PyCat safe in the Roche Pit. They'll even commit the Rost Awards for some extra damage. Ice Shards do scout it out. Roche at about half health. You can tell Empire really want to contest this, but not sure if they can. Wow, he actually killed this really fast. There we Helps go. Helps allies. Roche secured by Mama's Boys. Ursa gets the Aegis. Now Empire will just have to retreat. That's it. Well played by Mama's Boys. And a good use of the first wards as well. I mean, Epsor's had an amazing early game. He's got Arcane Boots like five minutes ago, and now he's got 1,200 gold in the bank. If he gets a really fast Blink Dagger, heroes like Quap are going to be in huge danger, because if it just becomes yep. Shadow Salmon plus Ursa, they kill any hero with that if they both have Blink Daggers. Yeah. And PyCat's almost got his as well, so Empire's got to be really scared, not to mention the Silencer just hit level 5, and he's been consistently pressured by Nyx Assassin. The longer they delay the 6 means more early fights that are going to go in Mama's Boy's advantage. Yeah, no doubt about it. And it's kind of a, a pub classic, the uh, Shadow Shaman Ursa duo, just uh, stacking up the Fury Swipes while you're stuck in the Shackle. And mm -hmm. didn't really comment on it here, but it definitely has a, a lot of potency. Nesca Madness up on the Ursa. How close is Goryets to 6? Nope, not close at all. He's literally 1 XP into level 5, so still a ways to go. There's the Sanj on Aloha Dance, so Gyrocopter a little more tanky and could get involved in these skirmishes if need be. He does already have two kills and one assist, so he's done a good job of balancing his farm and trying to get active. He'll be a really nice counter against Ursa if Ursa doesn't go on the gyro, basically. So that's what it's going to come down to. There's a TP from Bambo. He actually doesn't have enough mana for a stun here. But Yapsor is wrapping around the backside. He will have his arcane boots up in about three seconds. Aloha Dance moves into the trees. TP's out just in time, and he will live. Yeah, I, I think they looked at the how Dazzle was moving there, and it was pretty obvious that something was happening. On the bright side for them, they don't waste Nyx's ulti, so Nyx is still going to be able to use this to go look for kills. He's almost got Arcane Boots of his own, and in the meantime, Empire's pushing mid. Yep, and Mama's Boys will rotate over. Remember, PyCat does have the Aegis here, so he can afford to be a little more aggressive. Still no Blink Dagger, though. And that will repel Empire, at least for now. How's FN? Looks like he'll go for the Orchid first on Queen of Pain. Has that first Oblivion Staff to go with his Power Treads. I think he does need this just because it allows him to pick off the heroes like Dazzle and Shadow Shaman. He, he needs to be able to kill those guys. They are a little bit light on interrupts just to stop Shackles, for example. A nice channeling uh, disable. Yeah, good point. Um, the Queen of Pain to just deal with it. And even Orchiding the Ursa is a really good thing that you can do because it prevents him from being able to use Enrage, which is going to reduce damage. So if you're able to initiate and burst that guy down, especially with like Epicenter or Burrow Strike or something like that, it could lead to chain disables. You could Orchid into a Global Silence. There's... It'll give them a lot of good options. But if the Shadow Shaman Blink Dagger comes out fast, 
then this Quop Orchid is going to be awful. He's just not going to be able to survive with it. Yeah, Bambo farming in the jungle here. And, you know, it looks like Yapsor will be able to grab his blink around the same time Havost does. They're both sitting around 1,800 gold. Havost is about to ding level 9 as he farms in the jungle mid lane. An engagement might break out, but just a little ward battle for now. I think uh, Mama's Boys will be a little more passive here until LC gets her blink as well as Shadow Shaman. They're both really close, a lot of unreliable gold, and now would just be a bad time to die. Down bottom, though, Goryats gets jumped on by Pycat. Nice free kill. That was the blink dagger reveal on the bear, and does net him a plus one. The kill's so easy for her, so there's actually nothing that Sansa can do, and this is exactly why Mama's Boys keeps picking this hero for Pycat. Yeah. Because they draft against people that don't have disables. If, if Ursa finds Gyrocopter by himself or Sounds, he gets a kill every Aloha time. Aloha Dance, Vendetta right into stun. Yapsor's there, Ward Trap. He's got the phase boots, but it doesn't matter. He's going to be stuck in there with plenty of damage to follow up. And they'll finish him off. Call down, does some damage. Those Maybe sets up kills. for FN. He's got a double damage rune. Sonic Wave connects on two, finds the kill on Bambo first, but now Pycat's here, he's low on mana, but he's got the right clicks, one more will bring down FN, Yabzor gets it, now the snowball across, Funix here, he's got the Walrus Punch, gets another kill the other way, but it's going to cost him everything, oh. huge heal bomb from the Dazzle, sets it up for Ursa, two for three with Mama's Boys finding the advantage. Is Mama's Boys going to win our tournament, dude? Like, I don't know, they, <laughs> they seem pretty solid right now. They are... CL won elimination mode, so it would uh, kind of follow suit for the way Moondog's been <laughs> doing tournaments. Man, no kidding. They love these game modes. It's... It's the pub mode, dude. Yeah, Black, bit, yeah. Black does pick up his Blink Dagger. A uh, good choice. It's definitely a different game than it was the last time he played Legion. They can go for ganks. They don't have to worry as much about death, panic, team fight stuff. Ooh, smoke here from Goryats and Havost. They'll join the Gyrocopter with oh, the they're TP. Gonna they're gonna this go is not where they want to be. Oh, nice stun from Havost. Buy some space for Goryats. But Havost... Okay, they're just going to push him back. Thought they had some detection to bring him down, but looks if, like they didn't. If that stun only hit one person, then that would have been dead silencer. But yeah. luckily, um, they, they did Burrow Strike both heroes. But that's a great way to break a smoke. That should give Mama's Boys a bit more smoke advantage. There's two on the courier, or sorry, two ready to be purchased for the Dire team. Mm -hmm. Our for Radiant team and Dire, same, too. So. so once again, we'll see an Aghanim Scepter on the Ursa. He's got the point booster. Yeah. I, it's pretty good. Um, he can remove Orchid. It basically means Quop's Orchid is worthless if he buys it. It's kind of a nice counter to Orchid, actually. Orchid mids. Yeah. If you think about it that way, not only does it stop the Orchid from working, but it means that during those like five seconds, you just don't die because then you're taking 20% mm -hmm. of the damage she deals. It's quite good there. And like we talked about, they're pretty light on stuns. Sand King is the main one, and if you can use your ultimate to get out of that, they don't have yeah. too much to slow them down after that. And it actually hard counters Global Silence. It's a cool interaction there. It's like a BKB, basically, is what that item does. Yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. And no, I didn't really think about that, but you're right. Yeah, it it's stops. really good this game. So it stops that. They'll stop Burrow Strike. It'll stop the Orchid from Quap. I think it's a pretty good Ags game. Like, people keep buying it. I think the only game that it wasn't good was the game that RTZ bought it. Because mm -hmm. almost every other time, I see a lot of value in the item. Yeah. Great against Global Silence. You know, the, the and it also doubles the duration of Enrage, which is not insignificant. Does it? it goes from... Uh, oh, um, oh, no, never mind, not in rage. I misread that. Oh, we'll see Havos just get destroyed. That's the first dual victory for Black, plus 14 call damage, down. but call down coming in. We'll clip Black. They're going to try to chase this down, but there's going to be tough kills to find, except Yapsor. He's going to be stuck in the tree line. He deploys the wards, and Sox will grave himself, maybe buy himself a little bit of time here, but it looks like he could still fall in the end, depending on how much they pursue, and they'll get it. A three for one. They do Damn. get the dual damage, but far from ideal for Mama's boys. They were ready to fight. They might kill Aloha here. Yeah, Pycat goes back in. Oh, it's a creep. Oh, he finally gets it. Now the snowball will come into Pycat. He's already used the ultimate, but he'll turn. He wants to try to fight Funic here. He needs to try to back out. The DOT will they, they not be enough, but the Ice Shards get it. Now Black locked in place, poking Funic as much as he can. Walrus Punch comes off cooldown. Elite's stick charges. But not enough. Can't survive. Now Bambo. Can he come in to take out the trash? Havost is there. Connects with a stun. Bambo not quite ready for that one. He uses the spike carabus, but Snowball will still connect with the stun. Mama's boys starting to come apart at the seams here. It's just one long team fight as Yapsor comes back. Goes in on the Funic. Big damage. Gets it with an auto attack. But again, it's going to cost him his life. Empire getting so much out of this. Havost ending with a double kill and just about hitting level 11. Yeah, great fight there for Empire. It looked so good on Mama's boys at the start because they did get that... A uh, duel off, the global silence is wasted, but their turnaround was just so strong. They picked every off one by one, and definitely the last engagement, Mama's Boys clearly got outplayed there. Yeah. But they kept yeah, trying to cover each other, and it led to maybe them getting a kill, but it was not good trades. Yeah, at first it looked like just a really good pickoff, and then they could disengage, and instead it was the opposite. I, it was, I'm, this, I'm not used to this desert map. I kind of didn't realize that Yapsor had ran up into the high ground above the room yeah. and isolated himself. I thought he was going to be able to easily get away, but kind of an awkward position to put himself in.
It was, but he was trying to delay things. So unfortunately for him, there was just a bit too much damage from the gyro, and his wards didn't do that much. I also think they didn't get much value out of the Dazzle. Um, he did have to grave himself, but when you're being chased by three heroes, that doesn't do anything. Yeah. The fight was basically Mama's boys trying to run, and they just kept getting picked off. And the other bad thing was that Bambo ended up dying twice there in that fight. Once at the start, and then once as he com uh, got back. And he's he was only a mere 300 gold away from his blink dagger. If he would have had that, the fight would have been so much easier. Look at this graph here, wow. Purge. That is a big swing. About 4k net worth. Mama's Boys had a 2k lead, and now they're at a 2k deficit. Experience graph pretty comparable. We'll see the Mama's Boys smoke up once more. But Radiant have a ward down right there. It might have just barely saw the edge of it. Well, considering the fact that Empire is also running into the enemy yeah, jungle, I'm, I'm guessing well. they didn't have their eyes on it at yeah, the time. Probably doesn't matter. Both teams Radiant's smoking in opposite areas of the map. Yeah. Sunso does pick up a Glimmer Cape, though, and that's going to keep him pretty survivable against ganks from Nyx, as well as just Ursa jumping on him. Mm -hmm. But the Tier Radiant's 1 tower does fall for Empire. Mama's Boys will take that one and enjoy their new jungle. Yeah, opens up the map a little bit. This this game really uh, detection is a big deal now that the glimmer cape is out on uh, the silencer. Of course, there's a Nyx on one side and just the Sand King. I think gems and who's holding which will definitely be a big part of this mid game. It's kind of funny how mirrored there on the map. Black might get ganked though. Yeah, rotation mid. Ice shards will be off the mark and Black will just back up. There's a blink dagger on the Nyx assassin, so Sexy Bambo has a little more range here to try to initiate. And also Yapsor, uh, pretty darn close uh, to his Aether Lens, so he'll get the real Stretch Armstrong Shackles purge from far away. Uh -huh. Obos in a good position here. There's the first stun, a little bit of Mana Drain on Aloha. This tower should fall, no Glyph. Uh, a yep. couple more hits and it's going to go away. I don't know if they're ready to fight, though. Really close, almost got that deny. Ice Shard, scouting things out. Not really a great angle to initiate here for Empire. They're at the low ground disadvantage, limited on vision, and I think they're going to be forced to retreat. Yeah, Mom's Boys is definitely a little bit scared now, too. Considering how bad they lost that last fight, it was really just a couple of careless mistakes. They're you know, not careless, but um, well, definitely overestimations. Yeah. It was definitely sloppy. Four Blink Daggers on Mama Boys, though. Yeah, they're extremely mobile this game. That's going to be really hard for Empire to deal with. If they're ever out of position, the fight starts in a really bad way. Like this. Out of position, Aloha Dance, caught by himself. Black has the duel, Pycat has the damage. That's a winner, winner, chicken dinner. Now Havost gets scouted out by oh. Sexy Bambo. Big damage coming his way. Can they finish him off? Do they have the detection here? Nope. Stun from Havost to try to get away, but it's not enough. Legion Commander gets a second one up on the scoreboard, and Funnick will be forced just to back up and wait for reinforcements. Nice set of ganks here for the Mama's boys as they get a two for nil. And that Mask Madness is really being beneficial on Ursa. It, it does so much damage. FN, caught by a Hex, but there's the Global, and that'll counter the gank. Sonic Wave sets up the oh, kill Bambo on the might other get way. It. Can Bambo secure this kill? This could be huge. He's got the Mana Burn up in one. Two more auto attacks. Come on, little bug, you can do it. No, oh, no, you can't. 20 HP, Quap will blink into the tree line, and TP home. Man, Bambo really wanted that kill. He played it really well. He spiked Carapace, the Quap ulti. So he reflected all of that pure damage and got the stun follow up, but it wasn't enough. Yeah, nice use of the global as well. We'll see in the mid lane here a blink duel onto Goriet. Should have the damage, and again, Black gets a victorious, or a victorious duel. 42 damage on him, and all the while, PyCat was just in the Roach Pit, soloing that big boy. He's got himself an Aegis and Aghanim Scepter completed. So things still coming into line here for Mama's Boys despite that uh, sloppy fight down bottom just a couple of minutes ago. Yeah, PyCat's doing really well this game. He's not. Uh, unkilled like he was the last time he played Ursa, but he's been playing really nice. Yeah, getting a lot of kills. He really is a huge threat to Gyrocopter. Like it's gonna be a while until Gyrocopter feels safe against Ursa. Buying a BKB doesn't make him safe. He has to get like a butterfly or something mm -hmm. to be survivable. But he also does need BKB due to Shadow Shaman, due to Nyx Assassins. So he's in a bad place where for a very long time he has to constantly worry about the enemy carry because yeah. he's always gonna be threatened at death. Yeah. Well, that was the item progression on Gyro. He's got the S and Y completed. Mithril Hammer picked up. I imagine that's going to be a BKB coming on him, uh, even though, like you were talking about, not the end all be all here. You think Mama's boys will turn up the aggression a little bit now that they've got the second Aegis? Ah, uh, definitely. Oh, and I, and they, as I asked that, yeah. they smoke into the jungle, so I guess so. Like they've got such good items too. They've got an Aether Lens on the Shadow Shaman, for example. Like all of his disables. Love the way range. they're setting this up, though. Baiting with Pie Cat here. They, they found the good the guy. Backside. They find Goriath. He doesn't have a global, but they'll catch him. Oh, the, oh, snowball. the snowball resets it. There won't be any dual damage for Black this time. They could still find the kill. The mech has been used. Glimmer Cape as well. Goriath survives. Now Aloha Dance in the front line. But both channels the ultimate onto Pie Cat. Really limited uh, damage output, though. They do get the kill on Pie Cat. That's the end of the Aegis of the Immortal. They also picked up the kill on the. Nyx Assassin in the back line. One for one so far, but PyCat in really deep. Soxka has the shallow grave. Now he's going to turn and try to right click, but there's not much the Mama's boys can do to keep him alive. They'll have to sacrifice PyCat and turn tail and run. 
Snowball trying to pursue. Satsuka has the grave up in five seconds. He'll try to TP home, but Walrus Punch will interrupt, and they get another one for three. And Mama's Boys lost their ages to boot. Really good fight there by Empire. I thought it was going to be okay for Mama's Boys because it was just an Aegis, but they lost Nick's Assassin during that little engagement as well. Yeah. That was game winning, honestly. The fact that they saved, sil well, not game winning, but fight winning, that they, the they saved Silencer. Yeah, that snowball, man. It's so hard to deal with. And they found they found the best hero for them to find. I mean, sure, maybe it could have uh -oh. been Quap or something, but. Goryets, that's not the place to be. Just walks right into black. He uses the duel. Yapsor's there, and that's just free damage. <laughs> he was like, look, you deserve this. Yeah. I'm going <laughs> to. Where, I'm going to be at the secret shop, meet you there, take my damage. That was ambitious, uh, to say yeah. the least. Black I, will be, uh, has his BKB now, actually, has enough gold to pick it up. I like how Black just clicked on him. I mean, he, he saw him <laughs> coming with the ward, but he, he just walked straight at him. He didn't, like, press the attack, he didn't blink. Yeah. He just walked right up and was like, hello, fight me. <laughs> <laughs> wow, BKB is a plenty coming out here. Queen of Pain, as well as Gyrocopter, grab theirs, uh, as well as Black on that LC, like I just mentioned. So, a lot of magic immunity coming up in this next engagement. And just a couple fights, and they get so many core items, and their problems are going to go away so much faster. Because yeah. now the BKB is finished, he just has to wait for Butterfly. Just a couple bad fights for Mama's Boys, and things turn around so much. Up They're top, is this a solo kill for Bambo? Potentially onto FN. Vendetta? Did he mess up a Vendetta? I hit? don't think he hit the Vendetta. Yeah, yeah, it was just a stun in Mana Burn. So, just harassing. Is that probably a Dagon with that Staff of Wizardry? Uh, it's definitely very possible. Could be four staff as well due to the d heavy disables on Empire. And he's also been dying a lot. The silence has really hurt him. That's true. So, One in six right now. Uh, with that said, though, if he does get Dagon, it's going to increase his solo kill possibilities by a lot. And Bamboo is probably the one player that buys Dagon the most. So it could be either. I, 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 I'm not sure. They do need a force really bad, though. Like, look at Urso as he respawned. If he's in a bad position, nobody can save him. Grave, yeah. grave isn't enough. They need four staffs and mules and stuff like that to back up heroes. So as much as I'd like to see Bambo do crazy things, I think he's far enough behind where he has to go for force. And then there, oh, that's a four staff for Havos picked up here. Pycat bumps into Aloha Dance and we'll jump on the other side. Yeah, the Sand King on the other team. The, the, the bug staff. hero, the other bug hero. Yeah. I thought the same thing as soon as I saw it. Lots of bugs this game. Yeah, Basher on the way for Ursa. Just waiting for that third piece. Yeah, good choice. It'll be a really good solution against Sand King, against Quap, all these heroes that are hard to kill. It might give them enough disable to score kills afterwards. Yep. And makes killing the silencer all that much easier. Yeah, that'll help. The Glimmer Cape actually really helped him in that last fight as well. Oh, it's actually a Yule's, it seems like, for the Nyx Assassin. He's got okay. the Void Stone in the bank. That's a good idea. Um, it'll stop silences. So, and also give him some survivability. It'll buy him time in between blink daggers, for example. If you stop taking damage for half a second, then you can use yourself and then blink afterwards. And honestly, that extra movement speed you get, not the reason you buy the item, but it is pretty nice on Nyx Assassin. Unless you just hunt around a little more quickly. Yeah, good point. Good for the rotations, because he is a very active hero. Yep, so he pretty much won't have to leave the the map once he gets the Yules. He'll have plenty of mana regen. He's already got a lot of HP regen due to the heroes. Mm -hmm. Increase. So. Yeah, looks like Shadow Shaman's getting a Yules as well to go with his Blink Aether Lens, so he'll be able to deal with that global a bit more easily. Looks like some tower exchanging though, top lane. Mama's boys will pressure the tier two. Glyph comes out, and same story uh, in the bottom as Empire pressures this tier two. Looks like both sides will just let him fall, and they'll go down pretty comparable times. Ooh, can Black hit the duel off? Oh, Havos, they're actually going to come back to the fan. I spoke too soon. Empire want to take a fight here. Orchid comes out onto Soxco. They're going to try to isolate the Dazzle, but Pycat nearby. They're going to jump onto FN. He gets the bash, and the global's used, but it just doesn't matter. Still a freebie for the Mama's boys. Soxco gets stunned now by Havost. Walrus punch onto high cap but there's the duel fun it goes down bkb used by aloha dance he uses the call down Havos still just hanging out in the tree line, but Soxka is still alive. That's the target they wanted. Now Havos comes in, will finish him off. Pycat getting low, has to try and turn tail and run. They should have the damage to bring him down, and they will. Havos with the force staff secures it. Yapsor will TP out. At the end, it's a two for two. A good defense from Team Empire. They end up yeah. getting off the... They kill the tower down bottom, and they defend up top. Should be able to deny it. Very nice. Yeah, Havos did a great job there. Um, I feel like Dazzle maybe should have just grave TP'd instead of going for the grave runaway, because mm -hmm. Havos was able to secure that kill, but... I wasn't quite watching that fight as much as the other ones, so I might be slightly wrong on that one. It was kind of a, an odd fight. I think it was the Nick. Somebody just moved into the tree line down and here TP'd, and yeah. just TP'd out. Yep. So it was a really scattered and broken up fight for Mama's Boys. Yeah, when when I saw the first death, which was the Quap, I didn't even know which team it would be on. I was like, oh, somebody died somewhere else. There, there's something, some weird stuff happening. But yeah. killing the Quap's pretty good. Losing the Ursa afterwards, not so amazing. The power of the Basher. 
and one dash and there's nothing the clock like can do. It just, it just shows the weakness of the Ursa eggs though. Like oh, wow. it's great to be able to stop a disable and to break global sounds with it and stuff. Mm -hmm. But if you're using it for that, then you're going to miss some of the damage components and you're going to miss, you're just going to take a lot of damage afterwards. Like, cause after he kills one hero, he's just a sitting duck and he's very easy to kite and he's very easy to kill. Yeah. So the gem situation looks like it did hit the deck for Empire, but they were able to recover it. Havos yep. grabbed it and he's handed it back over to FN now. Actually, a whole Aloha dance on the gyro snagged it. Oh, I okay. believe. Um, I'm not sure who was carrying it. Maybe Tusk or something. But it's a hot potato. They've just been passing it around. Radiant jungle. Sexy Bambo bumps into Havos, doing some harassment, but no way to find a solo kill there. And we'll just back off. I like that Bambo is okay. constantly hunting though, keeping eyes yeah. on the enemies and just putting pressure on them, making sure that they're that, that paranoia effect, you know, they're always wondering yeah. where's the Nyx assassin, could he be coming? That's how he plays, man. Like he he's constantly pressuring his opponents, making them unsure where he's going to be. Yeah. So then they are farming less efficiently because they're standing next to each other. It's a lot of really good things he does as a yeah. player. So Gyro, looks like he will take heed to your advice here, Purge. He's got the Eagle Song picked up, so most likely the butterfly for some evasion. And that'll make uh, Ursa's life more difficult. He'll most likely go MKB this game. I think PyCat's going to have to at some point. Kind of. It's Evasion is really good against Ursa, um, but it's also in some ways slightly bad. Out of all the heroes that do heavy physical damage, he's maybe the best against it because if you miss, it doesn't use an overpower stack. So mm. basically you attack full speed until all six hit. So despite... That is an interesting Missing, mechanic. Missing, you still get to attack really fast. He doesn't burn any of his charges. Doesn't yeah. really cost him anything except some of that burst damage output. Yeah, you waste a little bit of time, but he just keeps slapping until he hits you six times. So it, okay. it's good against Ursa, and it can make a huge difference. But oh, F Fang gets not jumped huge. on by Black. Easy dual setup. Bambo's oh, got, they the got the mana that gem. Burn. That's a gem. That's six hundred gold and more dual damage. That's the kind of kill that uh, Mama's Boys is hoping for. That's such a big kill. That was a BKB. Uh, there's a BKB on black, and he's got 3K in the bank. Mm -hmm. It's a nine-second BKB what he, still. Wonder what he buys. Maybe AC, uh, possibly MKB. I think an AC would be pretty solid. It would yeah. really increase their damage output. And black's overall survivability to physical damage isn't really high right now. Not that that's a big deal. There isn't that much physical damage on Empire, but it would help. I, I think that's I, the perfect mix help. of survivability and damage output, and they're going to start to group up a little bit more now that we're past the 30-minute mark. Team fights will be a, a little more prevalent. Speaking of team fights, Roche on the way, about five seconds till it comes up. Pycat blinks in. Oh man, that's a little bittersweet. See if he lingers around. But this will be Aegis and she is Roche number three. Which is such an early Roche. Yeah. Warriors. Uh oh, they're gonna find him. Black just walks into him. This time he'll use the press of the attack, but easy duel, free damage for the LC, up to 110. This poor silencer, man. I'm starting to feel for him. Yeah, their wards are in good places. It's gonna allow them to scout this up. They're yeah. checking for this one high ground where they will find it if they have a sentry. I don't know if they do that. He's though. got the gem on Dyer right now. It's in the hands of Bambo. So yeah, they're going to find all these wards. And they saw the one that was placed over by the large camp in the Dyer jungle. They will kill that. This guy right here. Yep, there you go. Bambo will be happy with that. Oh, that's so. pretty funny. If you hit the ward with your Vendetta up, it doesn't kill it for some reason. Yeah, you don't get the extra damage. Yeah. I like that he did use Vendetta for that, though, just because it, it, pro it limits his opponent's ability to go for that kill. Yeah. They want to see it. Oh, they find Pycat and Roche. It's early, too. Roche still very healthy. Havos with a stun on his Soxka nearby. He gets Orchided as well by the Queen of Pain, but Black uses the BKB, wants to try to find someone, but can't They're get a dual target. It's a wasted BKB. Snowball in onto Pycat. Weave comes out. Aloha Dance gets caught by the Rasta Wards, though. Global now deployed as well as the Sonic Wave. Black could be the first casualty of this fight. Pycat's still on the Roche, but he will finish it off. Aegis does not get snatched. It goes into the hands of the Ursa. Aloha Dance trying to man up and fight here. Cheese ended up somewhere. I'm not sure, but Aloha Dance getting very low. Oh, He's he the one with it. the cheese. He eats it just in time, and now Pycat graved up. Will go down. It's the end of the Aegis. Bambo lingering nearby, just trying to fight near the Rasta Wards. They've got a Sentry Ward down, so he needs to be careful. Blink, stun on two, trying to make space for Pycat. Big damage onto Aloha Dance. So it's just not enough. Now he gets counter stun, doing damage to Havos, but there's the fourth staff away. Shallow Grave buys oh, Pycat. Oh, gets the bash onto Aloha Dance. Gets the kill before he can go into the snowball. Ursa ends up dying, but maybe they can still clean this up. Bambo dies, and it's not happening. Empire take the fight. They burn the Aegis one for four. They're going to get one for five. They finish off Dazzle as well. It's a disaster oh for Mama's boys. They just should have let the Ursa die, man. I, I don't even I didn't even see where Black died in the fight, but there was some engagement on the left side of the Roche pit, but yep, right around here. they just kept the Ursa in there. They did get the gyrocopter, but there's no way that's worth it overall. Yeah. It's I mean it was a nice play to get the Ursa before you get into the snowball. Lucky bash there. 
but rather ambitious for the Earths that are just running. It's sort of like you mentioned earlier. You, you need to have some kind of a distraction, some way to know that that's safe. You either yeah. have eyes on Empire and you know they're too far away to contest, or you try to push somewhere else to take their attention. And away. it was just made so much harder because PyCat did it during a greedy time. A lot of his teammates had just been on the other side of the map clearing observer wards and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I'm sure that Empire saw that. They said, okay, they cleared our wards. That means we can go check Roche as a team and they won't necessarily be five. Yeah. And they were able to play with PyCat and make, take a long time to kill him. And that cheese that Jaro used was mm -hmm. equivalent to an Aegis as far as I'm concerned. In oh, a lot yeah. of ways, better. That fight would have been completely so different harder. if he didn't have it. He would have died right away. His damage output would have been mitigated. And and then he would have still had Aegis. Like, yep. He would have killed him before he used his Aegis. Instead, it took like two lives to pick him off because there were so many stuns and like three heroes. Yeah. Well, Bambo's now picked up uh, the Ghost Scepter on Nyx Assassin. You don't see him grab those defensive items nearly as often. It's pretty needed. I think it'll be for an E-Blade, most likely, is the way he usually plays it. Oh, he's going to oh. duel at Yep. Catches him. They should have the damage for another duel victory. PyCat comes in and will make it happen. Now FN uses the BKB to try to make the escape. Does have some TP scrolls. Might be able to make it out. Walrus Punch onto PyCat. They use the Global, the Sonic Wave, and PyCat completely isolated. It was him versus three with Bambo in the tree line. And what started is a good quick kill. Oh, they got Black one two. For two. Oh, no. Black almost TP'd out in time, but they had the damage for it. If Black actually had a plate mail there, he wouldn't have died, no matter what. Like, he's got 3,800 gold in the bank now. I think he really needs to spend this. Yeah. Like, he got a duel off, and that was great. It was it was a good initiation, but their whole team was there. Yeah. And Mama's boys were completely split. They, they really thought that would just be a quick pick, and then they could back out. Yapsor, who blinks out just as Funic tries to pursue. Ice Shards will scout it out. Can he get in there in time to interrupt the TP? Yes, he can. Walrus Punch to follow up. Yeah, there's support on the way. Gyrocopter will be here, and I don't think Yaps oh, is surviving off. this one. Yep, Ice Shards. There's should the be able to, maybe. Buys him a little bit of time. He blinks out. The great chase continues. Ice he's Shards coming up screwed. in about two seconds, and now I think he's definitely going down. The Glaive's on the way, and Gyrocopter will get the last auto attack. And Empire's, they're just controlling mid game so much better. Mid lane, gank onto FN. It's Sexy Bambo with a solo kill. That was a huge kill. He just got 800 gold for that one. Yeah. That actually saved their racks, in my opinion. Maybe not saved the whole racks, but that would have been five years up, three dead mama's boys. At the least, it would have been a 5v4 with no Shadow Shaman, and getting that kill was so big. Mm -hmm. A lot of gold for him. He kind of messed up the previous fight, though. He didn't get the stun off on the, the Quap. They go in, though. Oh, they missed the stun on the Goryat. He will go into Glimmer Cape. Aloha Dance on the backside gets dueled by oh, Black. Black. I don't know might. if that's the duel that Black wanted. He's taking a lot of damage here. Meanwhile, on the other side, Bambo hit by the Walrus Punch. A really chaotic fight for Mama's Boys. Their damage is completely split. Bambo, the first one to go down. Black is still alive, but very low on HP. PyCat forward, one on three. Does some, or one on four, rather. Does some okay damage to Aloha Dance, but it seems like Mama's Boys are kind of falling apart at the seams here, Purge. That was a really weird fight. I mean, Hobos is just making sure that Ursa does nothing. He just keeps Burrow striking him. He stuns him for two seconds, waits nine seconds, and stuns him again. And yeah. Every time Ursa tries to fight somebody, it's just not quite working out. This Eggs hasn't paid off at all. Yeah, they'll get this tier two tower in the mid lane. Buyback from Bambo comes straight away. Ursa doesn't have one. He'll be in the grave for about 50 seconds, but with Quap down, Empire won't go for the high ground. There's still one outer tower remaining up top. He'll clear out the dire jungle and then go back to their side of the map. Gyro now up to about 4,500 gold after that fight. He's had the butterfly for some time. Well, at least Black does have some of his AC components there. And the duel was kind of good because it delayed Gyro's damage. But True. on the opposite it's side of the fight, ability. it was just a Nyx Assassin and Ursa trying to deal with three heroes. And they need Shadow Shaman involved in that because they need lockdowns. Mm -hmm. They need lockdowns. They could also have used the damage from the wards there. Yeah, that might have helped. They it's not very output. high damage just yet because he doesn't have eggs. But He is level 16, though. He's looking for kills here. Who's coming? It's uh, Bambo. These two definitely can kill yeah. Queen of Pain. There's it, no way they couldn't. It will be the Assault Karas coming out on uh, the Legion Commander now. Has the two expensive pieces, the Hyperstone and the Plate Mail. So, coming up uh, right around the corner here. Look at this gold graph, man. It really speaks to this game, how back yeah. and forth it's been. Empire taking the biggest advantage we've seen yet. Of only 5k net worth at 37 minutes. Just speaks to how close it's been. And I, I think it's really been Empire's just playing well from behind, and Mama's Boys is playing kind of poorly. 
in their decision making sometimes. They like, played well in the early game, but now they're yes. getting may maybe a little cocky. I don't know if that's the right word here, but yeah. it seems like these team fights, they are sort of just running at them and not quite on the same page. With, yeah. Are we all committing to this, or are we just going for a pickoff? They will get a Tier 2 tower down bottom with Rost Awards, but it will probably cost them their Tier 2 up top. Yeah, certainly will. The first fight that they lost was definitely like that. They played very overly aggressive, and it didn't work out very well. And now Gyrocopter has this big butterfly advantage, and Mama's Boys needed to push their advantage before he gets that. But now his net worth is a whole item ahead of what Ursa has. And yeah. Ursa can't compete with this yet. He doesn't even have Abyssal, and now the Rax is getting pressured. Yeah, Satanic will definitely be scary. They're chipping at the Tier 3. Still two heroes down bottom. Yapsor TP's home. Pycat going to hang around a little bit longer to pressure that tower, though he does have a TP scroll ready. They put some damage onto Aloha Dance. They hex him up, and he does take a few tower shots. They've already taken this Tier 3 down to about half HP. And with that, uh, PyCat will just start to back up from the bottom lane. Look at that positioning from Havos, though, man. He is ready to drop that epicenter on the whole team. Yeah, he's in a really good spot. And he's got Aether Lens, so he can Burrow Strike a little bit farther than everybody. Yeah. So if they scout him out, this could be disastrous. Looks like they'll be okay for now. Burrow Strike on the way. Our epicenter. Doesn't do much. A little lackluster. Bambo gets off the Spike Carapace, and now the real fight will break out. Global's used. Some BKBs deployed. Sonic Wave doing pretty good damage. Mama's Boy's getting pushed back to the well. Sasuke forced the grave himself, and that will... Uh, Put Black in the grave. No way to save him. They go back for the tier 3 tower. No glyph. Backdoor protection, but they're going to try to choose oh, through kill. it. They just destroy the Sand King. Pycat gets a bash. Now they're going in on to Funic. Some pretty good damage, but the Walrus Punch. Now into the Snowball. We'll buy some time. Yule's used by Yapsor, but it's not enough. Ursa's going to go down, and now the Shadow Shaman could be isolated. He puts Shackles onto FN, but it will cost him his life. Nice stun from Sexy Bambo. I feel like they're just delaying the inevitable here, though. Purge Empire doing so much damage. Now the buyback from Pycat. They're running out of resources, and they will have to retreat. Goryance could possibly get left behind here. He gets off the Glimmer Cape, but they've got detection. The Sentry Ward comes down, and they will chase him down to finish off the kill. So Mama's Boys do hold on to their barracks. They lose a Tier 3 tower, but it was costly. They had to burn yeah. one buyback on the Ursa, and they certainly did not win the fight in terms of net worth. Yeah, they, they definitely lost the fight a little bit, but they did defend, so that's it's okay, I think. I think they're happy going even. If they can just push the waves out a bit more and get more map control, then that's going to lead to more Bambo kills. Yeah. His uh, Impale Stun was, was fight winning there when Very it caught sick. those two heroes. And PyCat is getting some kills, but the armor items continue for the raiding team. Yeah, Legion Commander, 128 plus damage, but it feels like Black has just not had a big presence in these last few fights. Well, the, I think part of the issue is that they're two physical cores, the Legion and the Ursa, they just... Oh, misses the stun on Aloha Dance. They're just very countered by the survivability that Empire has. Mm -hmm. Any butterfly carrier is going to be a problem for those two guys, because neither of them really wants to build an MKB. They're not the kind of carries that can fit a damage item in, yeah. in the early game like that. They need Abyssal Blade, Basher, AC on Legion Commander, plus BKB, plus Blink Dagger, so... It's hard to deal with the gyro now that they got behind. Mm -hmm. And there's a Lincoln's now on Queen of Pain as well, so that's going to limit Bambo, it's going to limit Duel a little bit. Yeah. They do have Poison Touch to try to break the Lincoln's, but they, they are pretty light yeah. on just those small spammable spells that quote-unquote don't really matter to break the Lincoln's. Well, Dezel's also been able to pick up Guardian Greaves. He's looking pretty farm for a 40-minute game, whereas yeah. before he wasn't, didn't look very strong. But level 3 Weave now. He can give his team a ton of armor. The Poison Touch is basically at least a 1-second stun every 7 seconds. It's, his disables are actually going to be pretty solid now, and he doesn't have to worry about sounds as much as he did previously in the fights. If they can just have another fight where Epicenter falls pretty flat, Ursa does ultimately go MKB, by the way. He just yeah. really needed it. It's actually not terrible on Ursa. You attack so fast that if you get a couple mini bashes, you could actually get incredible damage. It's kind of like a crit here. They might yeah. fight. They're going to move. Fan Empire trying to steal the Dire Ancients. They'll use the Weave to scout out the pit. Roche is not up yet, but he's coming in a couple seconds. Whoever wins this fight could be rewarded with Roche number four. It was a pretty important time. Losing Weave was pretty big there. They could have caught some big heroes. Yep. Minus Empire's 15 armor out. would be so good. Aloha Dance will just start shipping at Roche, but they definitely don't want to commit to this. They know Mama's Boys are up on the high ground looking at Vision. Both teams very limited. No wards down from either side. FN will blink to the high ground. I guess Empire will have a small advantage with the Frozen Sigils. They can behind. scout with it. They could go on Havos here. Yep, Rost awards have come down into the He's going to try to duel him. They're going to go on him in a second. Here we go. Havos isolated up on the tie, high ground, and there's the duel. The global silence just comes out a little bit too late. Sonic Wave does big though. damage, though. They finish off Yapsor. Pycat gets graved, although really low. Now they'll be able to finish off Dazzle after he gets orchided, and Pycat will definitely go down. This could be the end of Mama's Boys after that. Three heroes down, no buybacks. Roche will definitely go the way of Empire at this point after a one for three fight. I just don't agree with Pycat going in there while they also duel off the Sand King. 
Yeah, I think he had to wait for the counter initiation. He just doesn't have a BKB. He can't be the frontliner. It only works for four seconds. It's a great play to isolate the Sand King, but the whole point of that is to give you an advantage before the fight starts, 4v5. And if you take the fight like that, where you have two heroes committed to kill the Sand King, and then it's a 3v4 on the other side, yeah. you don't really get that number advantage that you're hoping for. Especially when one of your carries is one of the ones dueling on the other guy. It's, yeah. it's like Ursa is backed up by a Dazzle and a Shadow Shaman versus a... Quap, who's really farm farmed, farmed more farm than anybody in Mama's Boys. A gyro that's more farmed. Like the, the gold advantage clear wasn't there. Mm -hmm. I think what they should do is they should have sat back as they went on the Sand King and counter initiated as Empire is about to initiate on those two heroes. Instead, they both went at the same time. I think they were scared about Roche being low or something. Yeah. And just Ursa, despite having a great early start, just keep kept putting himself in a position where he gets chain stunned and wastes wastes in rage and didn't have a BKB. Yeah. Uh, this is a really scary time for Mama's boys. So Vos comes back. He has BOT, so he can get right back into the fight. He'll go to the mid lane. There are no buybacks available for Mama's boys. They will have the Ursa up in about 30 seconds. Mid lane of barracks have already gone down. The top lane going down quickly as well. Melee barracks get destroyed and. If Mama's boys don't lose here, this will at the very least be some crippling damage. They find a sexy Bambo outside of the base, though. He's out of the game for 80 seconds. Ursa's still down for 20. This is rocky stuff, Purge. Yeah, that could just lose them the, ra the last racks here. Yeah, this could this could very well be Megas. I don't see how they kill Aloha Dance once, let alone twice. He's got the Aegis, Satanic, and BKB. God, that's hard to kill. Oh, outside of the base. Who do they catch? It's the Dazzle. This will buy them a little bit of time on the barracks. Ursa will be up. He Great uses TP. the Grave. TP out. And he'll live. Pretty clutch play from Soxka. It buys them a little bit of time here. They're going to have to fight 4v5. If they can do this, they can hold the game on, but it's still going to be hard. Lip is used now. Tier 3 tower's already gone down. No Tier 3 towers remaining. It's just Naked Barracks. Avos goes in, tries to catch Black, but he BKBs. The Global comes out after. He can't duel like he wants to. Black's just going to be completely isolated here. He gets destroyed. He's got the buyback. He'll use it. Nyx Assassin has gold for his now as well. Avos channeling the ulti. Goes in on the Pycat, but it's the other way around. Pycat will bring him down. This is the big fight they need. Aloha Dance getting low. They'll finish him off. He's got the Aegis as well as the BKB. Oh, they're getting kills. Back up. They're really starting to pick up the kills now. Quap isolated off to the side with the Yule Scepter. She gets it's as she comes back down. They're going to find the kill there as the gem hits the deck. They oh. get the silencer on the back line. Aloha Dance now bashed right away as he's hexed. He may fall as well. Havost with a stun, but they'll interrupt it. They've got the detection with the Yules. It's oh going to be a five man wipe. Mama's boys hang on. They have to burn all their buybacks, but they hold the base. There's two heroes without buyback on Empire, though, so they can definitely get some lane pressure here. Look they at that might. Gold swing. Oh that my was god. Pretty big. The experience change. Look at that. 15. <gasps> Thousand experience. How many levels did they just get? Dazzle's 18. Nyx is Ursa's 24. For God's sake, He's, that was insane. That was actually insane. Yeah, I can't believe they won that fight. They played it so well. So what's the play at this point, though, Purge? That was still a lot of damage. They have one ranged barracks left. No tier threes. Still have quite a few safety structures in the base. But is this the point where you just go all yes. in mid lane, hope they're short a couple of buybacks, and just go right for the throne? You, you got to have one person defend. The problem is Dazzle doesn't have boots of travel, so he actually isn't going to be in the next fight. I mean, they may just not even buy buybacks. I think they're just going to wait for everybody to respawn. I think that might be safer than trying to buyback defend this. Wait for everyone to respawn, let Mama's boys get a Rax, maybe work on a second Rax, which they probably won't get. Um, I feel like Mama's boys has to try to get a second Rax here in some ways. Yeah. One is just they not going to be enough. Yeah. They'll use the Rasta Wards down bottom. They've already cleared out mid lane. That's the Glyph for Empire. All three heroes dead right now are without buybacks. So it will be about 15 seconds before they can really take a fight. This will cost them at least two lanes of barracks at this point. Funnick and Goriets will not engage. They're just going to try to poke at them, do okay. whatever chip damage back they now. can. And that's two that's lanes of barracks. That's so big for Mama's boys. Getting two racks like that without losing anybody is massive. They get back now. The, the lanes are basically equal. The one racks that they have left, which is a ranged barracks, they have a slight advantage in that lane, which helps as well. Mm -hmm. Which means they mostly only need to focus on top and mid. Yeah. So if they win the next fight, it's going to force Empire to buy back. And then if they can win the fight after that, they can win the game. So they got to win two fights in a row to take this. Yeah, and that's going to be really hard. Just remember, they don't have buybacks. They at actually this point. do. They've got three. They do. They've got one on Ursa, Shadow Shaman, and Dazzle. Oh wow, you're right. If Ursa buys Abyssal Blade, he bought a BKB. He's okay. like said, "Screw buybacks." So Ursa's all in now. I mean, he needed this honestly. He's needed this all game, but he can win the fight now. If he can blow up Sand King, or Tusk, for example, perma bash these guys, he can win the fight. Yeah. But they're going for the range backs. Aloha Dance in the front lines. The mid lane is going to push in. That might break the back door protection. Remember, there's no glyph here. He's got the Lincolns on. They stunned him. Can they kill him right now? 
Oh, the snowball to reset. There's also a Lotus Orb down. FN pops the BKB, drops the ulti as you well. They do manage to keep them alive. Aloha Dance will live. BKB's uses they finish off Dazzle. He'll oh, get he the, the buyback. He gets stolen. He gets brought down. He does have the buyback. He'll use it straight away. The range barracks though getting low. They just need to finish it off, but they might not be able to do cat do it. Pie cat on the back line. Oh, the snowball. Us, but the snowball keeps him alive. Now FN still in forward. We'll finish off the Shadow Shaman. He buys back as well. Pie cat isolated. Very, very low. He's dead. He's got a buyback though. He's ready to get back into the fight. They'll finish off Funnick, but they lost the barracks. Oh, the shackle! Out. shackle. That's, the That's the stretch arm strong purge. Here we go. Aloha Dance. Can he make it out here? Havos gets brought down. He's not surviving whatsoever. Mama's boys might maybe have just done it. They're mega, but oh they have to go God. all in now. All right. They, I think they got this, man. No Jow for 111. The only people that can buy back are Tusk and, and Souncer. So, and they can't just like TP in and backdoor. They're not going to win with that. Like, they're going to buy Boots of Travel on everybody. They're going mid, and they're just going to throw it. They've got at least 56 seconds until the first hero responds, other than those two buybacks. And they can absolutely make it. Dazzle's the perfect hero to push the wave like this. You can keep your creeps alive, do a big damage to those. I think Mama Boys have done it. I think they won as well. They're, they're going for the push. Here comes BOTs from Black, oh and they can God. kill any of these heroes. They've all got Blink Daggers. They can do Blink Stuns into duels. That's a dead hero. That's five and a half seconds of Disable. Yeah. They all... Like, Bambo's going top to just split push the wave. He doesn't even care, man. Fun, it gets caught. He gets hexed. Shackle. Pycat goes in. The double duel. duel. The double duel as well. Lotus Storm not going to save you from that one. Black double rewarded there after 218 damage. Rasta Wards come down. It's, no it's just glitter. over. It's done. Goryetz is just going to well, have to stand here and watch his throne. They've got destroyed. 15 seconds, actually. In about 20 seconds, Quap and Sand King will be up, but... No. The throne's undefended. It just GG. ends. That's they it. won it. Empire's out. All of the Oh, bottom. my God. All right, so they go from winning the game to kind of playing poorly in throwing the game and then at the end they're like no 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 this is our game we're taking the win what a sick game back wow. and forth wow my god this is the lower bracket folks and these teams are certainly playing like it mama's boys take game number one in a nail biter race to the finish 50 minutes of non-stop chaos that what was a fun game. absolute insanity and that was just game one so uh we're gonna take a quick break and then see what the panel has to say about that one